So it's not about how much you do necessarily, it's about how you do what you do. But, so I try to explain to people who I teach scales to and I teach to be better guitar players, you wanna have more vocabulary. I mean, I probably, I'm 62 years old, I'm an old guy, so a lot of you folks probably never went to school and read, uh, you know, John likes Jane, Jane likes Spot, those books to teach you how to read. So, okay, well, you got the general idea. John likes Jane, okay, and Jane likes Spot. Well, that gives you a little bit of information, enough so that you can make a basic decision about the relationships. But if you pick up a, a Dostoevsky novel and you read that John's experiences were, with Jane were such that he was unable to decide in his heart whether it really was Jane, that she was the person for him, and the fact that her dog, Spot, had saved her as a young child in the river and that his father had been there, that there was a relationship that may or may not come to fruition. Well, okay, now I've gotten down to a very, very granular level of describing the situation. It's the same with music. Three chords, and that's what um, um, uh, Howard Harlan, who's an old, passed away, great songwriter, greatest songwriter in Nashville, sitting next to Harlan one time at the Trace Bar, we are hammered out of our minds. I said, okay, Harlan, I'm gonna ask you the question everybody else asks you. How do you write a great song? And Harlan says, skunk, it's real easy, man. Just three chords and the truth. Think about that. How many country songs and how many great rock and roll songs do you know that only have three chords? And they tell a story, and usually the story is about something that is either the truth in the, in the fact that it relates to something that you can relate to, which makes it true, or tells you something about that that you can relate to. So when I started to look at how Boyd was analyzing and synthesizing, I realized that's what musicians do. That's what athletes do too as well. I mean, what's a basketball player? If I said to you, describe a basketball player to me, how would you describe a basketball player to me? What would you say he does? Yeah, right. Okay. Well, if I, if I did an analysis of a basketball player, I'd say, okay, he's a wrestler because he has to wrestle and interact physically with other members of his team and uh, members of the opposite team. He's a strategist because he has to, in real time, based on the tenets of strategy that he already knows, make strategic decisions at the time on the playing field, battlefield, playing field, whatever you want to call it. He's an artillery officer. He's a ballistics expert. He has to figure out in, a, in, a, in an instantaneous period of time, run through in some fashion all the ballistic algorithms it takes to get the ball from where he is here, based on his understanding of ballistics in motion, into another place. So you start looking at what these skills are, it's way more sophisticated than you might expect. So I was sitting in General Clapper's office. General Clapper is now the Director of National Intelligence. He, I worked for him when he, he was at NGA, which is the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Uh, sitting outside, we're, we're gonna have a meeting and I was reading a, a magazine that they have called Studies in Intelligence. Uh, and the reason the magazine's there is because most of the stuff is classified. But there was an unclassified article that a guy named Bill Nolte, who worked over at the agency, over at CIA, had written about a revolution in analysis. It's time that we figure this out. We need to look at analysis in a whole different way. Uh, mostly because there's a tremendous amount of data from sensors that we never had before that we have to understand and we have to figure out how to bring that into the problem set. So I read this and I'm reading down, I'm reading down, I go to a paragraph and he says, he starts talking about musicians and how musicians improvise. And man, the light went off in my head. I picked up the, the red phone. I called over to another guy over at the agency and he says, Alan, I gotta talk to this guy. We need to meet, and we need to meet in a, in a, uh, in a skiff. We need to meet in a secure, classified in, um, intelligence um, forum where we can talk about things at any level. So they set up the meeting, and I talked to Bill about this, and I said, you, what you're talking about is you're talking about taking the, the talents that musicians have, and athletes, by the way, because athletics in the field, just like we talk about, is all improvisation. It's improvisation based on prior knowledge. How, you're talking, you're saying that we could teach analysts to do this, and I'm agreeing with you. I think it's absolutely possible, and the reason that I believe that is because, and I started to talk about John Boyd, and I can't, I'm, I don't have the time to get into the details, 
of, of how um, John lays out analysis and synthesis. But if you buy the book, and I don't have any interest in the book financially or anything, I'm just recommending it as a reading. In the back of the book are a number of the lectures and studies that he gave on analysis and synthesis. And I got to tell you, it is eye-watering. It is absolutely eye-opening. Read this stuff. And the good news is you relate to it immediately. Nobody's telling you anything different. They're just organizing in a way, in such a way that even though you, you never looked at it that way, you get it immediately. 